Hey guys, Caitlin here. Here is what we did in CC Cycle 1 week 5. As a reminder, everything that I share is linked in a blog post, which is linked in the description of this YouTube video, so that you can find anything that I've talked about. Um, also, as a reminder, I have the youngest class, or second to youngest class, I have ages 5 through 7. Second to youngest at my campus, at least. So, we're talking about the little ones for this stuff. So, here's what we did for this week. For timeline, I did something different with them this week. We did what I called timeline bomb, and I printed out these little bombs, laminated them, and stuck them to three of the timeline cards like this. And so the timeline cards are hanging up on my whiteboard with my clips. And so we would listen to the song, and then I'd have a kid come up and pick a card and turn it around. And if it didn't have anything on the back of it, then we didn't do anything specific, but if they turn around a bomb, then we would count down three, two, one, and then explode, and everybody would yell and raise their hands up and jump. So it was okay. Um, not maybe not my favorite thing we've done for timeline, but they liked the bombs, so that was that was fun. Um, for math, we had our nines and our tens this week. So for the nines, um, we would we laid down on the ground. And so as the song is playing and we're singing, we lay down on the ground, then we sat up, then we knelt, then we stood up in a squat, then we stood up normal, and then we stood up and reached really high to the sky. And they really liked that. We did that several times um, and they kept asking to do it again. So that was that one was a hit with them. For the tens, um, if you listen to the CC song, it's not really a song, it's more just like a chant. And there's like a shaking in the background. So we use our rice shakers that I made. And we just shook this while we listened to the tins. Um, I also took my giant poppet back that I used last week. And we had the kids, um, you know, we'd listen through the nines. And one of the kids would pop each of the nine ones. And then we'd undo them and do it again. Um, and then we did it with the tins. And so we did it like four times with the nines and four of the kids did the nines and then four times with the tens. So four of the kids did the tens. Uh, so last week this worked really well because I had six kids and so, and it was new. So they all just kind of crowded around and watched the kid that was doing the popping. This week, all eight of my kids were there and I felt like it was just too much. Like we had two groups of four, two tables of four. And so the kids at the other table couldn't even see the poppet. So they're just listening to the song, which is fine, but they didn't really have anything to do. So after one or two rounds of that, I handed these back out so that the kids who were not popping could shake along with the song uh, when they weren't popping. I think this it would be nice to have two of these or more in the classroom that way because you also have to stop and you have to unpop all of the bubbles before you do it again. It takes up some time. Math is already so long because you have two sets of facts you have to do seven times each um, that, uh, I don't know. It was okay. It was fine, but I think it's something I'd want to get maybe a second pop it or, or have something else for other kids to do while we're, while they're waiting. Okay. For history, um, we sang our song and I did motions that I found here on, um, YouTube and I will link to those, but we just did like ASL arts for Roman Republic. Um, Augustine or Augustus, I mean, was an A crowned, put a crown on our heads followed. Well, I totally forgot to do this with the kids in class. So I just realized it's supposed to be followed. I'm looking at my notes now. The Pax Romana was like this, divided Western and Eastern, then barbarians. We showed our muscles and Western empire like this. So I'll link to the video where she walks you through it um, more specifically. But if you weren't wanting to go hunt for other videos, that's what we did. Uh, so we did that a couple times. And then I took the, these visual cards that I made. I mean, I didn't make them. I printed and uh, laminated them. Someone else made them, but, um, there's eight of them exactly. So I gave each of the kids one and had them come up and put them in order. And they really liked that. We did that two or three times. And because once I'd kind of talked through the pictures with them and they know, they knew kind of what their card meant, they were able to put it in order because most of my kids are non-readers. And so all the activities that are like erasing this or putting a silly word in here, it just, it's a little bit too much for them, but this works nicely because there are pictures. Okay, for geography, um, we use these little googly eye things that go on your finger. My fingers are too big. There we go. They go on there like that. And then the kids um, can point on the map and show their googly eyes to the map. So that was fun. They wore those on their fingers and pointed to the different things on the map. 
Uh, for science, we used uh, the tune was was It's a Small World from a song that is on CC Connected. Um, but the hand motions I used um, from a video here on Instagram. She actually uses a different tune, but I just used her hand motions. And so we did sponges, stinging cell animals, flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, mollusks, sea stars, and arthropods. So we sang the song and did the hand motions a couple of times and then the kids sat in a circle and passed a bean bag around in the circle while we sang. For prepositions, we are just still continuing on um, our preposition song and hand motions and by the time we've gone over that and then practiced it a couple of times and then done the whole song, um, that's, that's all of our uh, repetitions that we're supposed to do. So this week it was between, beyond, like you're pointing beyond, but by like your something's next to you and then concerning um and the whole video i have all that linked so you can check that out and then finally for latin uh we went back to our latin lions and latin lamb so the kids use their little latin lions this is still not really getting easier for them at this age they have it they enjoy it and they have fun with it but it takes us more time to get the little lions on their fingers and get them ready to do it than it does to listen to the song <laughs> But anyway, they have fun with it. So I'll keep doing that every couple weeks. And then I had my little Latin lamb to sing along. All right. So that was everything for new grammar. Um, for uh, science, you know, there's not really anything to share with that outside of what CC provides us and the things that I, you know, like the scripts and stuff that I have linked on my blog. You can check those out. But I did another science devotional from this How Great Is Our God book. It is this one big mess since we were talking about pollution. So we did our two experiments, discussed and read that. Also, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but I have little like science journal type things, just a piece of paper for the kids to record their um, observations, draw a picture about what we did. Um, and that's, they've enjoyed that. It's good if we end up with a few minutes left at the end of science, I can give them that and have them draw, be drawing something about our science experiment. And then for art, this week was perspective. So um, I printed out a couple of examples. This is this was from like a drawing notebook thing on CC Connected and we looked at those. Oh, before we looked at those, I read them Harold and the Purple Crayon and they enjoyed that and it's really good. It kind of um, incorporates what we've learned about oils and drawing. But after we read it, we went, we talked about perspective and we went back and kind of looked at like, look how Harold is drawing his road where it goes to a point, his moon is little, that kind of thing. So this was what we used to introduce perspectives. So I read this first, then we um, did, look, looked at the art. I gave each table one of them, they looked at it and then we passed it around. Um, and thankfully there's like a cheat sheet thing that goes with it that tells you, like shows you kind of easily where the perspective lines and stuff are. Um, I took a couple of minutes to draw some 3D objects on the board and just show them kind of the difference in a flat square versus a cube. I had this little paper here in like a cylinder. Um, I did a couple of examples or just a real quick sketch on the board where I showed like drawing a road and drawing some little trees next to it that are, you know, like if they're all the same size, that looks weird. You want to make them smaller as it gets further away. So it was just like a real basic lesson. And then we did, uh, this is maybe my favorite art project we've done so far this year. We did this Egyptian landscape with the pyramids. This is from <clears throat> Art with Allie on, in, I mean, on uh, YouTube, and I'll link that video. Uh, so I'd watched it at home, of course, and done my example. And so then I just replicated with that with the kids in class. So, and what I do, I show them this example, but I take the whiteboard, we have big whiteboards in our classrooms, and I draw a big rectangle and I tell them that's my piece of paper. And so then I draw it on the whiteboard as they're, you know, like I demo a little bit and then they do that on their paper and the other moms in the classroom kind of help them. But that way they see me drawing it in real time as I'm walking them through it. Um, and I'm no artist, like art is not my strong subject at all, but um, I'm able to follow a tutorial on Instagram, I mean on YouTube and then share it with, uh, with the kids. Anyway, I was really impressed with how their pyramids turned out. It turned, they turned out really cute. So anyway, that was fun. That was our art for this week. And then for review, we played Stinky Feet. Um, this is a super fun game. And I have the 
printouts for this on my blog so you can print those out if you want them. Um, but I just have the stinky feet feet that I stick in the middle of the board and then I have all these little feet and they have numbers on the back that are like negative five, negative 15, positive 20. Um, and so these are all stuck on the board with the feet facing out. I use sticky tack to stick it on there though. Um, that was time consuming to put on there. It took up too much time. So next time maybe I'll take the time to put magnets on them so I can just slap them up there or have a mom be doing that while I'm doing something else. Uh, anyway, so they answer a review question and I just have a flashcard box with the, um, these are the little CC flashcard things in there. And so I just draw a card out of my little box. We review it together as a group. And then I have two teams, which I had eight kids, two tables of four. So one table was team one and they'd come up and they would pick a foot off the board. Um, and then it would either add or subtract points to their total. Um, and so I think, they, they kind of enjoyed it, but kind of also didn't quite understand it because they're a little too young to understand the negative number concept of it. And also, unfortunately, one team got all negatives like the whole entire time and the other team got almost all positives the whole entire time. So it was really unequal. There wasn't a whole lot of like back and forth, which is what we've had when I've played it in the past with other classes. So it was okay. Definitely, I feel like one that older kids would appreciate more than the youngest ones. They, they seem to enjoy it, but... Not as much as I expected. So that was review. And I think that's everything for this week. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye.